66 million years ago, I wasn't around then, a huge asteroid hit the Earth and triggered the mass extinction of almost all living creatures on the planet, including dinosaurs. Had the space object crashed somewhere else, some dinosaurs would have been able to survive and still live nowadays. According to some research, the asteroid had about 1 in 10 chances of wiping out the dinosaurs and other animals of that time. It was way more likely to just hit the ground without any strong destructive consequences. To understand how things could have turned out if the place of the collision had occurred elsewhere, we need to find out what happened that day and why the disaster turned out to be so devastating. This huge space rock fell into the coastal area of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. This caused a chain reaction that triggered natural disasters around the world. The place the asteroid hit is called Chicxulub Crater. Now half of this area is underwater. The asteroid was about 7.5 miles in diameter and moving at a speed of 27,000 miles per hour. This rock, bigger than Everest, was rushing toward Earth faster than the speed of sound by almost 40 times. Wow! The energy released in the collision was as powerful as an explosion of about 10 billion atomic bombs. And the destructive force of the blast wave was just one of several disasters. The asteroid happened to fall in one of the worst possible places. And because of the way it fell, it threw a huge amount of dust into the air. Imagine you're jumping into the water like a professional athlete, vertically, leaving hardly any splashes behind. And now think of how much water splashes when you jump into the pool like a cannonball. So the asteroid landed the cannonball way. The second disaster the asteroid provoked was soot burning. A small part of the Earth's surface consists of rocks. Only a tiny percentage of that part was rich in oil and sulfur back then. The asteroid burned and lifted so much soot into the air that it would be enough to fill an indoor baseball stadium. According to research, 65 million years ago, only 13% of the surface of the entire planet could have contained the necessary amount of organic material for the formation of such a volume of soot. That's why this place was considered the worst. If the catastrophe had happened on the territory of the other 87%, then dinosaurs would have been alive today. A huge cloud of soot and carbon dioxide rose into the air and covered the sun. The soot turned the sky gray and partially blocked sunlight. This led to a quick drop in temperatures almost all over the planet. It seemed like Earth was inside a gray veil. Many plants and animals couldn't survive the cold snap. Trees began to wither because of the lack of sun. The photosynthesis process was disrupted. The cold and withering of trees led to another catastrophe – global famine. Herbivores couldn't survive because they lost almost all of their food. Plants, flowers, and trees didn't manage to get through the catastrophe. These destructions spread far beyond the asteroid impact site. Hot dust particles, asteroid chunks, and small pieces of rocks settled to the ground across the continent and caused large-scale forest fires. Burning trees threw even more soot into the air, which made the situation even worse. The huge asteroid brought heavy metals with an increased level of toxicity from space. The melting of these substances during the collision provoked firestorms. The asteroid didn't only hit continental land, but also water, which triggered a huge tsunami. But that's not the worst part. The seabed was filled with sulfate, and when the energy of the asteroid burned it, it provoked the release of sulfuric acid into the atmosphere. The acid cloud mixed with a cloud of soot and began to spread throughout the sky. Hot rock particles were falling to the ground like fire rain. An acid rain started because of sulfur. It lasted for almost several days and left no chance for the animals to survive. Acid rain made the water in rivers, lakes, and seas poison. The acid destroyed anything that couldn't burn. A part of the clouds went to wreck the land, and the other part, the ocean. This made the situation even worse, as sulfur droplets wiped out a huge amount of seaweed and phytoplankton. The ocean generates almost half of all oxygen reserves on our planet. Those days, the sea creatures living in its upper parts were destroyed. It wasn't the blast wave, but lack of sun, acid, darkness, and cold that became the main reasons for the extinction of dinosaurs. 
But even when some lizards escaped from fires and sulfur, they met the sea element. The asteroid impact caused large-scale tsunamis across the planet. The very first wave was around one mile in height. That's almost three times higher than the Empire State Building. Billions of gallons of water were moving at 90 miles per hour. A wave this strong could easily destroy half of New York today. The meteorite created a series of waves 52 feet high. Massive walls of water the size of five-story buildings collapsed on the shore and demolished everything in their path. Lack of sunlight, temperature drop, acid and fire rains, reduced oxygen production, forest fires, giant tsunamis, and the explosive wave with the power of a billion atomic bombs – all this reduced the biological diversity of Earth by 75%. Yeah, that'll change your climate for sure. Giant asteroids used to hit Earth before, but they never caused such disasters all over the planet. What if this asteroid had fallen into another place, say a forest, far from water and mountainous terrain? This would have caused severe fires. A huge black cloud of ash would have risen into the sky and obscured the sun. But it would have unlikely generated acid or fire rains. Most of the species of the planet could have survived this catastrophe. What if the meteorite had fallen somewhere among the ice and snow? This would have provoked a rapid increase in temperature across the planet. Huge tsunamis would have sunk big tracts of land. However, ash and sulfur dioxide wouldn't have filled the sky. Acid rain wouldn't have hit the ocean. Many marine creatures could have survived and lived to this day. And dinosaurs, far from the oceans, wouldn't have noticed the meteorite fall at all. Probably the most terrible events would have occurred if a meteorite had fallen on an active volcano. This would have triggered the largest lava release in history. Destructive earthquakes would have begun, and the whole sky would have been covered with volcanic ash. What if the meteorite had hit some desert? It would have melted billions of tons of sand and turned it into glass. Just imagine glass dunes that heat our planet even more. And we could dig up the well-preserved remains of ancient lizards out of the glass. Anyway, there were many different possible catastrophic scenarios. And the worst of them came true for the dinosaurs. They are unlikely to return. Although, perhaps, they can be reborn. Scientists were inspired by an idea from a famous Hollywood movie. They wanted to find a mosquito that got stuck in amber. They would extract dinosaur DNA from it. But there was a problem with this. The oldest DNA sample they managed to find was 1 million years old. Dinosaurs were extinct about 66 million years ago. Besides, DNA is a very fragile thing. The probability that it could have been preserved intact somewhere for so long is very small. So, instead of searching for this ancient dinosaur DNA, scientists decided to take DNA from the closest ancestors of these lizards, birds. Over millions of years of evolution, dinosaur paws could have turned into wings and elongated mouths could have become beaks. Pelicans are very similar to pterodactyls, ostriches resemble velociraptors, and chickens are very much like T. rex. Okay, let's just stop and imagine for a moment a chicken the size of a T-Rex. Hey, you! You want a piece of me? Now, the common chicken is recognized as the closest relative of the huge lizard. Remove the plumage from it, cover it with scales, give a toothy mouth instead of a beak, and attach a long tail. And you get a real, mini Tyrannosaurus rex by body structure and movement. Deep in its DNA, there are similar genes that formidable predators have. With the help of genetic engineering, scientists plan to play with its DNA and try to reverse the evolution, which means breeding dinosaurs can become a reality. Well, that could come back to bite you. That sound is the explosion of a supersonic wave. The Earth's atmosphere has been invaded by a cosmic rock the size of Everest. It weighs trillions of tons and is flying towards the Earth at an incredible speed of 12 miles per second. It would fly from New York to Anchorage, Alaska faster than you can fry an omelet. Don't worry, we're safe. The dinosaurs that ruled the planet at the time, however, not so safe. This was a, um, a bad day for them. This disaster began in the area we now call the Yucatan Peninsula, modern Mexico. The meteor did make impact on the ocean, but the water did not extinguish it. The collision 
caused a huge amount of energy to be released, which began a cataclysm on a planetary scale. Imagine another sun lit up on the surface of the Earth. The initial blast actually blew through the surface. It was as hot as an oven and burned everything in its path. It set up a tsunami as high as the Statue of Liberty from the epicenter. The impact also provoked a colossal earthquake and volcanic activity. Several nearby volcanoes simultaneously released hot lava from their calderas. Millions of tons of ash and soot were released into the atmosphere, poisoning the air. This formed a huge ash cloud in the atmosphere, which for several years didn't allow the sun's rays to reach the Earth. The long nuclear winter began. Only it wasn't snow that fell from the sky, but a rain of sulfuric acid. Yes, it's safe to say that Chicxulub is one of the most devastating culprits in the history of our planet. In fact, why don't we have ourselves a trial against this space monster? Let's investigate this 66 million year old crime. Thanks to scientists' efforts over the years, we have plenty of evidence. I'll be the judge. In the name of space law, I give the floor to the prosecutor, respected judge, jury. Today, it is obvious to all that it was this asteroid that led to the extinction of our beloved dinosaurs. Some more beloved than others, <clears throat> T-Rex. There are other suspects, volcanic eruptions, a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere, a supernova explosion, temperature changes, the list is very long. But scientists have, without a shadow of a doubt, determined the truth. This asteroid left a crater on the planet's surface with a diameter of 93 miles and a depth of 12 miles. Though this scar is hidden under the ocean water, it can still be seen today. The perpetrator did attempt to hide evidence as the temperature at the center of the collision was so hot it vaporized part of itself, but not nearly enough. We know that lots of asteroids are abundant with the material called iridium. The fragments off this rock contain 300 times the normal amount. And research shows these fragments are exactly 66 million years old, just like the defendant. This is the definitive proof of guilt. Furthermore, the defendant knocked 25 trillion tons of hot rock out of the Earth. The debris of the asteroid mixed in with the Earth's material, and the immense heat turned the stones into glass. Scientists call these tektites. The energy of the impact threw them into the atmosphere, and after a short flight upward, the tektites then fell down upon the Earth. It was like a rain shower, only instead of water, it was a rain of hot fireballs. They bombarded the planet's surface for 24 hours and set fire to everything they fell on. Scientists have found traces of them all over the world. These are undeniably shards of Chicxulub. I arrest my case. Respected prosecutor, your evidence is very convincing, but our judgment must be objective. We now give the floor to the defense. Your Honor, I believe this is a terrible misunderstanding. My client isn't some space offender. It's simply the victim of cosmic circumstances. In fact, the asteroid Chicxulub isn't even an asteroid, but in fact, the fragment of a comet. These aren't my words. These are the conclusions of a study conducted by a group of astrophysicists at Harvard University. Asteroids are made of stone and metal. Most often, they resemble the shape of a potato. Comets, on the other hand, contain rock, metal, and ice. They look like dirty snowflakes with ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide mixed in. Most comets come to us from the Oort cloud. This is a large accumulation of ice debris around our solar system. Due to the elongated orbit of flight, from time to time, comets emerge from this cloud. So occasionally, a cosmic snowball crosses the barrier and enters our solar system. This is what happened to my client. According to scientists, Chicxulub's flight path put it dangerously near Jupiter, which, with its impressive gravitational pull, accelerated Chicxulub's velocity and put it on a collision course with the Sun. 
The sun's heat then evaporated the comet's outer coating of ice and dust, which formed a tail. But even before making impact, the sun's gravity shattered the comet apart. One of those fragments was the one that flew through space and crashed into the Earth 66 million years ago. Yes, there is some debate among scientists on this hypothesis, but regardless of the details, one thing is certain. My client did not intend to crash into the Earth 66 million years ago. Circumstances conspired it to be so. You're on. All right, I have listened to both sides and I've made my decision. In the name of the space court, I declare that the defendant is acquitted. Well, that was a bit of fun. The truth is that space rocks like Chicxulub are a dime a dozen. There are millions of them bumping into one another in the vastness of space. The Earth was just unlucky enough to be in the path of this one. Though the impact it's had on the planet cannot be overstated. This catastrophe ended the development of 75% of life on the planet. Some marine animals did survive the impact, for example, uh, crocodiles, turtles, and fish. Of the inhabitants on land, the only animals to survive were tiny creatures, no larger than a modern raccoon. Among them are several species of avian dinosaurs, which are actually the distant ancestors to modern birds. Scientists believe they survived for two reasons. First, unlike most herbivores that relied on grass for their diet, these dinosaurs had beaks, which they could use to split nuts and dig out seeds. So even when most of the plant life was gone, they could still subsist on what's left. Secondly, these dinosaurs' brains were larger than those of most. This means that avian dinosaurs could cooperate with each other and quickly adapt to new conditions. Lots of fungi and mold also survived underground and underwater. Gradually, the darkness cleared away and ferns began to take over the lifeless landscape once again. Thousands of years later, forests reappeared on Earth. One unexpected benefit to this disaster is that it allowed for the emergence of the rat-like mammals that are the ancestors to modern humans, as well as whales, bears, and even the platypus. Back before the incident, these mammals would live in the shadow of their dominant dinosaurs. But their disappearance created a biological vacuum. Thus, these mammals were able to quickly occupy that vacant niche and become the new dominant group on the planet. According to multiverse hypothesis, many parallel worlds exist simultaneously with our own. Let's imagine that this is true and that we found a way to travel to these worlds. Let's board a ship to fly through space and time. Our destination is a universe in which the asteroid flew past the Earth. In this reality, the domination of the dinosaurs was never interrupted. Earthquakes, tsunamis, ice ages, volcanic eruptions, the dinosaurs survived all these minor cataclysms. Most of the lizards have changed and are now unrecognizable. Due to the onset of the ice ages, many dinosaurs here are covered in feathers that protect them from the cold. Mammals also exist, but they're few and far between. You see some bats in caves, and there are many rat-sized rodents in the forests. During the day, they hide in the undergrowth or in burrows. At night, they go out in search of food. There are no horses, elephants, or other large mammals in this world. Why become large and noticeable if there are so many dangerous reptiles with big appetites around? There are no whales in the sea. There are no parrots, hawks, or pigeons in the sky either. But you can see creatures similar to pterodactyls soaring past. Some are about the size of a helicopter, while others are no larger than a swan. There are also primates, but they're in no hurry to climb down from trees and walk on two legs. In our real world, our primate ancestors settled in the savanna, where, because the distance between trees was much wider, they started walking on the ground between, eventually standing upright and evolving into Homo sapiens. In this world, open spaces are still very dangerous, so these primates stayed in the trees and evolved to more resemble a lemur, not a chimpanzee. So of course, humans have never emerged on this planet. This means there are no roads, cities, cars, or space satellites. But flowering plants did evolve, as did many fruit trees. 
many small dinosaurs would have evolved to feed on these fruits. This did also happen in our world, back in the Cretaceous period just before the failed collision of the asteroid with the Earth. The dinosaurs of this planet have grown wiser, reaching the level of a modern chicken. But a large brain uses a lot of energy, and enlarging it is not always a good strategy for survival. What's good for a primate in the mammalian world isn't always good for a dinosaur in the reptile world. Thankfully, this isn't our world at all. In our world, that asteroid really did wipe out the dinosaurs. They didn't stand a chance. What's interesting is it wasn't really the size of the asteroid that made the impact fatal, but where and how it hit the Earth. When measuring meteor impact, one important factor is the angle of incidence, which determines the kind of fallout to expect. Chicxulub hit the Earth at a 60 degree angle. This was the worst case scenario. At that angle, the impact knocked a lot of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but more importantly, lots of sulfur. This substance stayed in the atmosphere and formed aerosols, which are tiny particles that blocked the sun's rays. Without the sun, plants disappeared and the climate became colder. If the angle of impact was any different, then the dinosaurs could have survived this catastrophe. As cool as dinosaurs are, I'm glad I can go outside and not have to worry about a random raptor attack or a triceratops stampede. So as devastating as Chicxulú was all those 66 million years ago, I guess I'm glad things played out the way they did. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Thanks for watching. The problem with that asteroid that destroyed dinosaurs was not that it fell, but where it fell. This colossal space rock found the worst place where it could land. Also, the angle at which it hit the ground was the most unfortunate. If it had fallen vertically, there would have been less destruction. But it fell at such an angle that it threw a huge amount of dust into the air. After the disaster occurred, tons of soot started burning. 65 million years ago, only 13% of Earth's surface contained the right amount of sulfur and oil needed to form a colossal amount of soot. If the asteroid had fallen on the other 87% of the territory, dinosaurs could still be living today, but it hit the worst place and lifted a million tons of burning material into the sky. A cloud of incandescent particles covered the sky and set off on a journey across the mainland. Then, these particles settled on the ground and caused large-scale fires. Trees were burning and sending more soot into the sky. But the asteroid collided not only with rocks, it fell on the coast in a place where the seabed was filled with sulfate. As a result of the collision, it started burning, which caused the release of sulfuric acid into the atmosphere. The air became poisoned. It seems the dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. And now, let's imagine the asteroid falling in another place, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Huge waves flooded part of the land, but almost all kinds of dinosaurs survived, or even better. The rock could have fallen somewhere in the desert and left behind a giant crater. That's all. Yes, several dinosaurs passing by wouldn't have survived the collision, but the situation wouldn't have been so critical in general. So, giant lizards remain dominant on our planet. They don't allow other animals to develop since Tyrannosaurus and other ferocious reptiles hunt mammoths and other ancient creatures. The population of mammals is decreasing Velociraptors are fighting for territories with saber-toothed tigers and giant bears. A struggle for survival between dinosaurs and other animals begins. Then, the Ice Age comes, and some reptiles don't survive. Then, new players enter the field. Those are humans' early ancestors. Living side by side with dinosaurs is difficult. Lizards attack settlements and caves, so people have to build high walls for protection. By the way, the Tyrannosaurus poses less danger to people than you might have thought. According to the latest research, many creatures were able to run away from this monster. Yes, you probably saw how easily they caught up with cars in the movies, but it wouldn't be as scary in reality. Paleontologists and biologists have analyzed the strength of dino's bones and found out that the creature couldn't reach high speeds. The maximum it was capable of was running twice as slow as a field athlete. Thousands of years have passed. People have learned to live with dinosaurs. They've even managed to tame some lizards. They've domesticated herbivorous dinosaurs to develop agriculture. 
Triceratopses and bulls now plow fields together. Imagine farms swarming with Diplodocuses or Brachiosauruses. People climb their long necks and pick fruit from high trees. Stegosauruses protect pastures from wolves and velociraptors. Dinosaurs with shells, such as Ankylosauruses, help people across deserts. They, along with camels and donkeys, carry heavy loads. People share the planet with ancient lizards and live in harmony. The situation in the seas and oceans is much worse. Sea reptiles attack wooden ships and catch all the fish. Imagine that you're sailing to another continent with tons of grain, fabrics, fur, and other goods. And then a giant mosasaur appears on the horizon. It's one of the most powerful sea lizards. A great white shark looks like a small fish next to it. The creature could easily defeat a megalodon. And then it comes across a wooden ship. It bites into the deck and pulls the whole boat underwater. Water dinosaurs are the main obstacle to communication between countries. This slows the progress down for a hundred years. People built metal ships to withstand the attacks of the Mosasaur. And finally, they managed to establish sea connections. A similar problem occurs when the first planes take off into the sky. Imagine you're flying on a passenger Boeing. You look out of the window and see a pterodactyl. Ah, wait, it's impossible. These winged lizards aren't so fast, but they can catch up with a helicopter or some old biplanes. This poses a serious threat to flights, so people install sound protection systems on board each aircraft. Pterodactyls hear irritating ultrasound from a distance and fly as far away from it as possible. People equip submarines and ships with the same sound shields. Then, after people have learned how to defend themselves from dinosaurs, another problem appears. Lizards are the kings of wildlife, so they displace all other animal species. Dinosaurs run across African savannas, and lizards with fur live in cold winter forests. Lions, wolves, and bears are not the rulers of the wild. Rhinos fight with Parasaurolophysis. Stegosauruses attack hippos and take away their territories. Venomous dinosaurs live in jungles. Lizards that can climb trees scare monkeys. Imagine a reptilian ape jumping from one branch to another. To save regular animals from extinction, people have to control the population of predatory reptiles. Huge parks and nature reserves appear in all countries. People transport dinosaurs there and separate them from other wildlife. Dinosaurs seem to be completely under control. When the danger caused by giant reptiles passes, people begin to breed smaller, harmless lizards. Someone buys a chameleon, and someone keeps a microceratus at home. There are dinosaur exhibitions. People take these creatures for a walk as if they were dogs. Some people take selfies with reptiles, go shopping, and sit in cafes with small lizards. Dinosaurs aren't formidable now. They're kind of cute. People ride horses, camels, Parasaurolophysis and Pachycephalosauruses. Of course, many have tried to tame Velociraptors, but failed. Those are dangerous reptiles and they don't know how to obey. Taming them is almost as difficult as taming an alligator. But dogs and cats are still more popular because they're more intelligent. The brain of a dinosaur is almost the same as that of a chicken. But who knows, if they had lived to this day, perhaps they would have evolved into smarter creatures. Just imagine if dinos were intelligent. In this case, people would have a big problem. Some scientists think that even if a meteorite hadn't destroyed the dinosaurs, they wouldn't have survived to this day. They needed to carry their own colossal weight at all times. It was an enormous load on their bones and joints. Most dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to survive the Ice Age with such characteristics, but smaller lizards might have succeeded. Fast and agile dinosaurs such as Velociraptors and Pachycephalosauruses would have survived, but in what form? Could dinosaurs have already evolved into something else? Look at the good old chicken. Many scientists believe it's a direct descendant of the formidable Tyrannosaurus. Somewhere deep inside the bird's DNA, there are genes that the dinosaur had. Yep, it's hard to believe, but look at the chicken's body structure and how it walks. Remove the plumage, Cover the creature with scales and give it toothy jaws instead of a beak. And now, you have a mini T-Rex in the coop. And by the way, not only chickens might be the relatives of giant lizards, many birds are dinosaurs' living descendants. 
Surprisingly, alligators, snakes, crocodiles, and monitor lizards are not as close to ancient reptiles as pelicans, storks, and other flying creatures. Over millions of years of evolution, the paws of dinosaurs turned into wings and toothy elongated jaws ended up as beaks. The genetics of birds is the key to understanding dinosaurs. Pelicans are similar to pterodactyls, ostriches to velociraptors. Perhaps many other animals also share some genes with ancient lizards. If the meteorite hadn't fallen, all dinosaurs would have evolved into completely different, unusual creatures. Scientists want to carefully study the DNA of birds and try to reverse evolution with the help of genetic engineering. They hope to breed dinosaurs out of eggs one day. But to do this, they need to find a specific genome that hasn't changed over tens of millions of years. It hides in the DNA. And it's not so easy to find it and extract it. Do you think we will see powerful reptiles by 2050?